The Data Frog SF2000 falls under a really interesting category of handhelds. It's a device that you will not want for yourself, but one you'd certainly want to share with others. Despite that, there's been a bit of a buzz around this console. So why the excitement? I would say that almost all of the hype is because the Data Frog SF2000 is so incredibly cheap and it can still play games semi-decent, so let's check it out. Equipped with a low-cost SoC, the Hi-Chip B210 which has an 800MHz CPU, a GPU with 2D graphics acceleration, 128MB DDR2 RAM and a 3-inch screen. This console has the following emulation power, indicating that it can run most GBA games, some SNES without FX work well, but may have delays. At a cost of $16 with two controllers, it doesn't look too bad and it's kind of cute, isn't it? And it really does resemble a SNES controller, just a bit bigger. Unfortunately, that's the only good thing I can say about this handheld as far as ergonomics are concerned, since everything else has negative points. The first problem is screen tearing, which is an artifact on the screen in which one part of the monitor displays an image correctly and the opposite part is out of date, misaligning the monitor's frames due to the delay. In addition, the build quality is quite cheap, with hard, diagonal buttons that sometimes don't work properly. In all, SF2000 can emulate 7, 8-bit and 16-bit console platforms. Let's leave the gameplay running while I continue. Starting with the weakest, it manages to deliver a smooth emulation of the NES, Game Boy, and Game Boy Color. But even on these platforms, there are some issues, one of which is how rudimentary the emulators are. After these initial platforms, we have the Mega Drive. Here, the handheld manages to deliver good, choke-free performance in all games. In the case of the SNES, the handheld simply has a poorly made emulator. Here there are cases where the games work, even though their sound isn't emulated correctly, like Super Mario World and Street Fighter 2, and some there are missing voices or the music is completely different, and other cases where the emulation simply doesn't work as it should and is full of slowdowns, making the experience very bad, as in the case of games like Yoshi's Island and Super Mario Kart. Curiously, if you open a game, close it and open it again, the game runs a little faster in the emulation, which doesn't make any sense, and just shows how badly the SNES emulator on this laptop has been written or ported for it. And that's not all, in the case of the SNES, there are ROMs that won't open even if you change the console's region, so why were they added to the handheld's game list? Didn't anyone test them before launching the product? As for the GBA, most games simply don't emulate well, and there's a lot of slowdown and even one second freezes in games like Castlevania Circle of Moon, making this platform simply unplayable on the handheld. Finally, there's MAME, where performance in lighter games like Metal Slug and King of Fighters 97 is very good, but in heavier games like Garu, Mark of the Wolves, there are slowdowns and audio problems. And it doesn't stop there, the handheld comes with a lot of ROMs, but its system isn't drag and drop, where you add the games to the directory and it lists them, you need to mess with the OS databases to update your games, so you're forced to use a tool developed by the community for this, which totally goes against the idea of this being a handheld for beginners. In the end, unfortunately the SF2000 is a missed opportunity for Data Frog. The handheld must have sold like water in the desert after it went viral, but unfortunately the result is a product that works better as a shelf ornament than as a portable SNES, since ironically, it works much better for Mega Drive games like Sonic than for SNES games like Super Mario World. Did they also get the design wrong, and should it look like a Sega Mega Drive controller? It's a device you might pick up just because you know you'll want to give it to someone one day. And that's it. Thanks for watching, consider subscribing and see you in the next video.